Greetings on this Easter Sunday morning from the sanctuary of the Winchester First United Methodist Church in Winchester, Kentucky. We are glad that you have joined us in this way and we welcome you. It is quite different. We'll talk about that in just a moment. We thought we would start with the traditional singing of Christ the Lord is risen today as we come together. If you know the words, sing with me as we come on this beautiful Easter morning. Christ the Lord is risen today. pray together. Lord, we are so grateful for the day, grateful for this glorious Easter Sunday, even though it's quite different. It's uh, at a time when uh, our world is struggling, and yet we will come, O oh Lord, and know that you are alive and well, and we come to celebrate and worship. We pray, O oh Lord, for all of those who will see this and are gathered in their homes as we're scattered our sanctuary all over the country. We just ask, Lord, that your blessings and power will be upon each one. Bless those medical workers who continue to work. Those, Lord, who provide those essential services from uh, truck drivers to grocery workers to uh, pharmacies and, and all of those others essential people, Lord, that we are so grateful for today. Bless them and their families, O oh Lord. May those who are uh, suffering and, and uh, struggling with this illness or with other things, we pray, Lord, that they would feel your presence. And we pray, O oh Lord, that for all of those around us in our world who are grieving, who've lost loved ones in these days, that you would surround them with your love and grace. May all that we do and say today, Lord, be pleasing in your sight as we worship you on this holy day. In the name of Christ, amen. We are so grateful to have one of our young people in our church, Miss Brooklyn Fry who is going to come and share with us on the violin, accompanied by our music minister, uh, Ann Willis. She's playing a song that maybe on Easter we wouldn't normally play, but it is a very fitting song for us, a very prayerful song, Let There Be Peace on Earth.
And that is our prayer this morning, that there will be peace in the hearts and lives of people, not just from war, but the peace from all that's going on. What a weird Easter Sunday morning. I'm here in mostly an empty sanctuary, just two or three of us here as we share with you this morning. It dawned on me this week that this is true of a lot of sanctuaries, just as this one is. Over 100 years, some over 200 years, this is the first time maybe that there have not been people packed in for Easter Sunday morning. And so we gather in this way. I, I chose to continue to do a video for our Sundays rather than try a drive-in service or or something else. I, I think it's best that we not encourage our most vulnerable people to be out just a little while longer and and we'll... We'll continue to try to be in ministry in whatever way we can. I like the, the phrase that I've read a few times and that was coined during this time. The churches may be empty, but the tomb is also empty. My friends, we will be together again one day, just as will all of our sister churches, your church, and, and this one as well, and all the, the thousands and thousands of churches across the world. We will come together. And since we are Easter people, we can celebrate and rejoice in Christ's victory any day, just like we should be doing. But today, today we gather here in, in this way, and I want you to know that He is risen. He is risen indeed. That's our normal greeting for this Sunday morning. And I invite you to say that in your homes, on your porch, on your phone and everywhere, because Jesus is still alive. We've been traveling these days of Lent on Route 316. We've not come to the end of our journey today. We have come to the beginning and come to the place of victory so we can anticipate what might be next. I remember as a child traveling with my family and we would be driving along and I started asking just a few miles from home, when are we going to get there? It's because of that at around the age of six that uh, my mother handed me a map, showed me where we were on the map and where we were going, pointed out the roads that we would be taking, and I learned to follow those roads and to count off the towns and the cities that we passed through, and I learned to read a map at an early age. Just follow those towns. Just keep going through the things that and the places before you get there. And so we've come to Easter morning through Route 316. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him won't perish, but will have eternal life. It was because God loved us that Jesus prayed over us in the garden that he was beaten for us in the town square and crucified for us on Calvary. And it was that same love that brought Jesus from the dead to give us victory over sin and to give us life. Hear the story from John chapter 20. Early in the morning of the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. She ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. And Peter and the other disciple uh, left and went to the tomb, and they were running together. But the other disciple ran faster than Peter. But when they arrived, Peter went down into the garden, or went into the tomb. And he took a look, and he saw the linen clothes lying there. But he didn't go in. Following him, John came and they saw the linen cloth where Jesus' head had been. It wasn't with the other cloths, but was laid folded up in its own place. And then the other disciple, the one who arrived at the tomb first, he came in and he saw and believed. They didn't yet understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. And then the disciples returned to the place where they were staying. And Jesus appeared to Mary. Mary stood outside the tomb crying, and as she cried, she bent down to look into the tomb. She saw two angels dressed in white, seated where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and one at the foot. 
And the angels asked her, woman, why are you crying? And she replied, they've taken away my Lord. I don't know where they put him. And as soon as she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she didn't know it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? And thinking he was the gardener, she replied, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you put him. I'll get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, don't hold on to me, for I haven't yet gone to my father. Go to my brothers and sisters and tell them, I'm going up to my father and your father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene left and announced to the disciples, I've seen the Lord. And then she told them what he said to her. Jesus was thinking beyond this holy day, beyond the cross, beyond his life on earth. If we had a bulletin this morning to, to give you, the title of the sermon would have been Traveling Route 316 and Planning the Next Trip. You see, Jesus said, I'm going up to my father and your father, to my God and your God. He was going on to something better, on to something great. He had his next trip already in mind. If you've been on a cruise, you've seen the desk that says future cruise trip. You can sign up for your next cruise while you're still enjoying the one that you're on. Jesus was signed up for even greater things than what he had seen and experienced here. He was alive and going on to be with the Father, our living God. I could ask you where you're planning to travel next where you're planning to go when all of this is over, what trip you hope to make. Right now, people just traveled from their bedroom to the couch. It was a, it was a big trip. But where are you traveling beyond this life? Where will your present route in life take you? Route 316 says to come to the love of Jesus, to receive the grace of the cross, and know that Jesus is alive so that you might have plans and reservations in the kingdom to come. That's what Easter is all about. Hallelujah, my friends. I've got travel plans. Do you? There's no greater way to end this time together than the beautiful song, the Hallelujah Chorus. There is no greater way, my friends, today to worship and to give God praise than to sing and give God all the praise from the very depths of our hearts. Hallelujah, he is alive and well. May God bless you this day. And in all the days to come, let us as Easter people rise up and sing. Hallelujah. Listen as Anne plays. <laughs>